Sunset Tower. It's the album Sunset Tower. I'm about ready. You guys ready to, to get going? Yeah, let's do it. Let's jump in these fields. These magnetic fields. All right. Fields. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Album Concept Hour. I am your host, Brad LeBaron, as I have been all of these episodes. And uh, we are here for another week to break down another concept album, track by track. Uh, this time we are dipping back into Magnetic Fields' 69 Love Songs. And uh, just, to, just to give you a little tease of that, that one, uh, to, to kind of describe the first episode, uh, he has some lyrics that say, the book of love has music in it. In fact, that's where music comes from. Some of it's transcendental. Some of it's just really dumb. So, um, yeah, if you want to you know, understand what the first disc was like, uh, uh, you can also go back and listen to the episode. Uh, but we have our co-hosts, as usual, uh, same co-host, actually, for that episode. Uh, we have... John and Dave in the studio. How's it going, we John and Dave? Back. Hello, hello. Yes, we are all back. We are all back. And uh, today we have a returning guest. This is actually the person that introduced us to this uh, 69 Love Songs uh, project. Uh, he is uh, uh, formerly uh, from the podcast Spoofs, Goofs, and Novelty Songs. So we're dragging him back into the podcast game to help explain these particular novelty songs. Uh, this is... Marty uh, Kazabowski. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back they in. They pull me back in. <laughs> it was like magnetic, <laughs> magnetic, <laughs> magnetic field. Yes, I, don't know I was how, magnetically drawn back. I don't know how we would make sense of this album without you. you know, so. <laughs> I like that you said I introduced. This is like a famous album. This is like a famous <laughs> band. Well, like, I introduced you to this obscure band. <laughs> I, I think that I knew a good chunk of the first disc. The first disc felt pretty familiar. Yeah. But this one, I was out in the desert. Like I was the like, most famous, look, the most famous song is on this album. This part, this though. part, really? Which one was? Yeah. Uh, would you say is the most famous? Well, we're gonna get to it. I don't okay. know spoilers. Okay. Okay. No spoilers. Well, because like I don't know. Like I, this one has uh, to me. It feels like it's got a very, very different, uh, just vibe in general it feels a lot sadder to me for some reason mm-hmm. it feels um a lot more personal uh than the first disc the first disc seemed a little more whimsical and just there was all the animal songs that <laughs> you know were <laughs> obvious last minute add-ons uh not to say there's yeah. no last minute add-ons on this side but i, I would say I, I think the first disc has a little more padding and I think this disc yeah. has less padding. Although it seems yeah. unfair to say that because it's like there's no way they thought of it like this, like splitting it amongst the discs. Like we are reviewing it. Like, um, well, that's what I, I think. Disc two and three are stronger. I listened to disc two. That's what I thought. I was like, oh mm-hmm. yeah, let's get into nice, nut, like whimsical, like <laughs> you know, and like you know, some of these are like nice whimsical love songs, I guess. But like, there's always this like this tinge of just depression like laced inside of even some of those Mm -hmm. like i don't know i was i guess i was listening to the the previous episode uh uh, earlier and like you had made a comment about how like some artist says was being said like you know you're the most depressing like songwriter out there and they're like oh you've never heard of uh uh, steven merritt then Mm -hmm. and i was like huh i didn't think he was that depressing but then looking at these lyrics i was like oh i get it I get it. What he was saying. <laughs> I think he gets a hard rap because I do think his re- the reputation of the band is sad songs. But I think his, his tongue, you know where his tongue is, firmly planted in his cheek. That's where it is. Like he's 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 making is, a little joke of it. Like it these is are kind all of kind of like, It's kind of dark comedy in music. Yes. It's yes. Uh, yeah yeah because there are a few of these where yeah it is like meant to be a a, a like uh. uh a, a spoof or a oh. uh, uh, I, I hope I'm using that right. Uh, or a <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Um, but uh, no, no. I mean, you know, these are um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I feel like this is uh, the the new wave like section. Yeah, these yeah. Are, this this section definitely is more takes on uh types of love songs right like that's the whole idea of the album mm-hmm. is he's doing takes on love songs and he's doing yeah. takes on yeah sort of structure like there's like harmonies there's certain tracks in this section that are like yeah harmony parodies you could argue i would say um oh definitely definitely but calling this a spoof is 
That sounds like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there was one one legitimate spoof in the first disc, but uh, um, uh, mm. uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's a legitimate one in this disc. Uh, the jazz um, song is well. We'll get to it. We'll, oh, get, to it. we'll the, get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah, let's. You know what? Let's let's get to it, guys. Uh, we have we have twenty three uh, tracks to get to today. We're gonna try to move through them uh, uh, at a buckle rapid in. pace. So yes, buckle in. Uh, uh, we're, we got a lot of a lot of weird love songs to get through. Um, but, but we're yeah, gonna get through. We're em. gonna get through them, guys. Mm. Uh, but yeah, this first track to start things off, uh, we have roses for track number one. <laughs> you almost played the whole song. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. Just just shy of it. Just shy of it. Yeah, that was like 30, 31 seconds or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh yeah, that's Roses, which I thought was a you know pretty okay like intro for the the album, you know. Nothing too sus sus, sus yet. <laughs> Here. Nothing too sus yet. Well, well, the next track I have real problems yes, with. Yes, sure, we'll but, get to uh, it. Because like no, this, it's... this happened, and then the next one, I was like, "What the, f- what the?" Fuck? No, it's it's the, the, as much as I said, like the album isn't. Yeah. It's they probably weren't thinking of the album as like, well, let's make songs that go well in part one and then part two and part three. Yeah. There are definitely breaks in this in the three uh-huh. discs. Like ro- like roses is a hundred percent a like <laughs> break song to lead you into the next part of the album. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, all, you, learn, of... you learn things too. They're teaching you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Locked I do enjoy like this. Well, I love, I do like this kind of like weird little poem thing. Like there's, you know, there's some merit to it. Uh, oh. Buy more stock and roses. Millionaires will always woo. And don't be shocked if roses make a millionaire of you. So it's like, uh, Kind of like a, it, it starts out like money with money talking about love and as you know a context of money and then kind of romanticizing it at the end by saying like oh well you know the fact that people are giving each other roses so much that you're rich from it is a sweet thing. It's a poem. It's a it's a very yeah it's a nice succinct poem yes yes <laughs> um and uh, then it leads into. Love is like jazz. Here is Love is like jazz. Love is like jazz. <laughs> Same song a million times. Look, it kind of come off monk. Not that yeah, long ago. Say, this was a really a last hard week, turn. Last <laughs> week, right. we did, you, did the, you just did the right? yeah. Smug, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so when this track came up, I was like, huh. It's like a hard right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially so early in the album. You know, I haven't even had a chance to like acclimate again real, to real the magnetic crappy field. Jazz. Yes. Uh, so uh it's a really yeah. bad song. It's this a really one, bad song. There's nothing else oh to my say God. about it. It's so it's, bad. It's just so like it's such a like it's so insulting to what jazz actually is, you know, like calling this jazz, I, it, you know, it's like if you were a jazz student and you heard this, you'd be like, what the, what the fuck? What the fuck? I, back that's the feels? joke, right? But though, I know like, it, it is it's like, maybe, maybe it's just, he's yeah. just a troll. He's just a big troll. And he's just like, I know that jazz students are really going to hate or if this. If you never heard jazz, like, man, I'm not really into this. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, if if you do think this is jazz, if you're unfamiliar, then um, it could actually be damaging. But, you know, but... Whoopsie. <laughs> hey, as someone who doesn't listen to jazz, this colors my entire experience of jazz. This song oh, yeah, right yeah. here. So, so. This, there, you, you had no problem with this. Like this didn't like hit your <laughs> I'm ear like, weird. What is this new style of music I'm hearing? This is fascinating. Yeah, is this improv? Is this what, yeah, is this what what they call Miles Literally Davis improv. was talking about? <laughs> but uh was this the yeah, birth of, was this the birth of cool this kind of reminds me of the rebirth of slick 1999 <laughs> is that when this album came up right so yeah, yeah 1999 yeah. jazz was born yes the year the, year, the famously the year <laughs> jazz, jazz famous. was famous <laughs> yes. um but yeah this kind of reminds me of that one track off of the king crimson album where they're just dicking around on different instruments and in, like clearly just 
just fucking around on instruments in the studio like for 10 minutes <laughs> yeah that's what that's what the music in the background kind of felt like to me it's like they're like intentionally trying to be as like out of, as out of time with each other as they yeah. possibly can yeah yeah so yeah i'm signatures what's that it's it's definitely a great joke on uh the jazz crowd uh <laughs> you know because jazz people are a notoriously you know serious bunch you know i will say <laughs> that sometimes they do need to you know have to have the piss taken out of them um, but I don't, I don't know if he really makes a great argument that love is like jazz with this, to be honest. Uh, and a weird, weird, <laughs> let us know viewers. Yeah. In, in <laughs> love is like jazz. The same song a million times, the same song a million times in different ways, in different ways, strange fruit with and without wind chimes, pretty loaded statement right there, but he goes there. <laughs> He's a horny man, so <laughs> he's a horny man. The horny guy. <laughs> I mean, he 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 made sixty nine. All of these songs are yeah. horny, like they're all really horny. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what I'm. I'm confusing depression with horniness. I think. <laughs> well, they kind of go hand in hand, so uh, they okay, do go okay. hand. Yeah, in hand. I just yeah. need to. I just need to take a different different perspective. <laughs> it's not quite the way of horny, horny but it's true, <laughs> especially yeah. for a man. Nothing that yeah, nothing makes you more horny than jazz, jazz music. Um, but yeah, this next track, especially we have, bad jazz. <laughs> yeah, that's the horniest jazz. Um, but <laughs> uh, this next track we have is uh, "When My Boy Walks Down the Street." very classic pop like yeah regression so i don't know if i, I really enjoyed this song i don't know if i enjoyed it even more because coming off the last track or if it's just yeah, it was definitely refreshing coming off the jazz one my, my god this is way better this is so good it's like oh whew. all it's right very nice yeah i mean the, the album like, is ordered really well the album's yeah. ordered really well yeah yeah uh i don't know what the shtick is for this ordering though yet because i know last time i had this theme where like uh every like five songs ish there was kind of like a rotation of of similar tunes, right? But I, I, yeah. I was not able to distinguish a similar pattern here. No, there all. isn't as much in the second disc. I think the second disc is more. It feels more like twenty-three different songs. It's freestyle, right? like jazz. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly, like jazz. It's freestyle, but um, yeah, this one was just a fun. Like, I love the the style. These, you know, it's like, uh, um, what is that kind of like English, like sixties rock or something throwback. Yardbirds. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it kind of has that feel a little bit, but like it's you know more modern production, obviously. Um, but yeah, I like the I, I like when he goes for big genre things in these mm -hmm. tracks. That's when I think he's really, really shining. But, yeah, because um, it, it, it's it has the strongest like take. It has the strongest, I guess. Yeah, the strongest take. Because yeah. it's like a very specific thing you can pull from and kind of riff off of rather than just like making up a random, I mean, in general, like, I don't know, <laughs> now yeah. we're getting into my own personal creative process, but yes, I do yeah. think having stuff to riff off of can be really helpful, especially if you're writing 69 songs for one album, like, yeah, well, yeah. having some, having some stuff to reference is really easy and nice. Well, yeah, because there was, you know, on the last album, like, there were a few, uh, like, spoken word moments that, mm -hmm. um honestly could have been left out um and uh i feel like you know the first track roses has a spoken word thing but they, it's done a lot better i think than some yeah. of the stuff on the first no it feels disc. more essential yeah 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 Th like that's the thing D like disc two does feel like it's more connected uh the, the tracks i don't know feels like there is a more consistent uh theme to it whereas like the first one like it just had just a little bit of every everything yeah. splashed all over the place you know I felt more modern, I guess. But um yeah, this track uh I really enjoyed. Um uh there's a there's a nice little um line here with a quote from Merritt. Um it's uh talking about uh the chorus amazing, he's a whole new form of life, blue eyes blazing, and he's going to be my wife. And um this person um says a little joke about gender. 
he is going to be his wife. Um, but then he uh, he writes about this in uh, 69 Love Songs, A Field Guide. Uh, mm-hmm. Daniel Handler uh, wonders to marriage. I think that there will be people who will see this song and think he's going to be my wife is a gay marriage statement to which Merritt replied, well, I suppose it is. So um, there is apparently a field guide mm-hmm. to this album. So uh, if you need uh, uh, any more backstory uh, or any more material, I guess, to consume with this the 69 Love Songs, there is that by Daniel Handler. Um, but I do think, uh, yeah, this, this uh, disc gets much more into uh, yeah, his personal life and his personal pr- perspective, whereas the last one, I feel like the perspectives were all over the place, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, this next track is... Now, this is, this is one of the ones that where it starts to get very depressed, very bleak, <laughs> but like... He he just I, I think he just has like this obsession with death that I'm just you know noticing, but he brings it up quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, time enough for rocking when we're old. Darling, time enough to write an epic poem. But tonight I think I'd rather just go dancing. There'll be time enough for talking. And- Yeah, yeah. Love his voice when he does. What is that? Was that a guitar in the background, or is that like a, a uh, mandolin or something? Or I think it's a it's, classical guitar. Sounds like he's picking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Finger thinking. picking on a one of the like the ones with the plastic mm-hmm. strings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. This one was like you know kind of you know brought back to like oh this is like kind of a regular kind of tune of his. This is what you'd expect. Maybe outside of this album oh. or something. Oh, they're right there. I mean, <laughs> but does, he, does he have a? No, their other albums are all weird. They're all okay. Weird. He doesn't have they're like a bass weird. line. He doesn't. I mean, uh, kind, it's the kind of the yeah. severe stuff. Is is, uh-huh. is his you voice know. is bass enough? That, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> bass line. Yeah, yeah, you got him there. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it's a mix of all this stuff on the other albums too. Like it, it doesn't. Okay. It, this isn't like it's. It's not just he's just like going wacky and crazy just for this album. Like all the albums okay. have some weird songs on them. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. Cause uh, yeah. Like, like Sufjan does a lot of weird stuff, but mm. it is all in the similar vein. It to some extent, you know what I mean? Like, it's, sure. you know, mm-hmm. whereas this, he really, really like goes, he, you know, a little like avant-garde here and there. And just, yeah, he's somewhere between Sufjan and, uh, what's David Longreth, the David 30 projectors guy. He's somewhere between yeah. the two where it's like, yeah. he's not quite going toward, I'm going to do a whole album. That's a remake of a uh, black flag album. Yeah. He's <laughs> not going that far, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's, he, he really likes to, it seems like he really likes to experiment in the studio and yeah. uh, try new things. Uh, but this song isn't that. This song is just a very simple melody. It's very just yeah. Yeah. straightforward song. Yeah. And really like kind of, I mean, it's, you know, it's, I was saying he was talking about death a little bit, but I mean, it's, it is a romantic song. It's talking about like, you know, kind of, uh, like longevity growing older with someone and like taking things slower as you're, you know, going, growing older with them. Um, which always like always any of when, whenever that comes up in a song that, that always like get, gets me a little bit, you know, when they, when they go there, uh, cause you know, some love songs, like a lot of love songs don't go there. You know, they don't talk about the, you know, the 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 whole experience, the whole experience, of it. Um, not just the highs in the beginning or the lows at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the the, the whole damn enchilada. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I know, I know. I said this right, about taking your wife like off it. for a date. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I I, I really enjoy uh, whenever he gets into this uh, register, though. He's got an amazing uh, uh, voice. Oh, he's um, got the best bass voice. He's so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like there's one song on here. I can't remember which one, but. He's like almost hitting like the bottom of his like register. Mm. I can't remember which one it is. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have another track for you guys. Uh, uh, in case you know this, the last one was depressing for you, which it, it shouldn't be. Um, this is very funny. Yes, my thing. That 
not a very funny mm. statement. <laughs> but nice hey, fade by the way, very good fade on that. That was very yeah. clean. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, it will just it just hangs out in the air like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just <laughs> all the all the music cuts very funny, and it's like oh. <laughs> Uh, this is kind of a depressing song. This is one of the ones where it's like, um, it's from the perspective of I think someone that is like headlong, over, you know, head over heels for someone maybe. Um, and they at the end here they say I love you, honey. And I think when very fu- they say very funny, that's like the person responding like, yeah, oh, that's ha, ha, that's where that's, my that's, brain that's, went yeah, yeah. first. That's funny, like as in like they don't get that. You know, they were saying it for ha, real. Ha, 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 that's funny. It's like, oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're serious. Uh huh. And I think that's why. I don't know. Personally, I think that's why it has that that ending like you that. That's another you one. Didn't of think it was a good joke. Jokes. I Abru- thought, it, I thought came. it was a pretty good joke. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think this is a pretty good joke. I think that it is pretty funny. A good zing. honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one to go home and cry yourself to sleep to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's this it was a nice, nice, sweet short one. There's a lot of sweet short ones. Um, I know he he really likes like three stanzas. You know what I mean? That's like the the amount of of time he uh-huh. is the sweet spot. Yeah, you know, one of the few Dudley Clute songs on the album. He sang this one. He sings like five songs over the course of the three Deadly. discs. I'm pretty sure. Dudley Clute. Oh, Dudley. Dudley. I was gonna say oh, okay, this okay. voice <laughs> sounded different. Yes, he does. I'm counting quick. It's. it's Six songs, I think, total. Oh, on the this course disc? Of the or the, oh, the whole, on the three discs. He has one okay. other he has one other song on this disc. Which Did we'll he have get one to. on the first disc? Yes, I believe I he like does. The one that we're, uh, they were, they were talking about downtown. Um, he, he was talking about how he's everything the, you need. He's the, 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 the luckiest man. guy on the Lower East Side. The luckiest guy on the Lower East yep. Side. Yeah. And uh-huh. how fucking romantic. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I like this guy. I like this guy too. Kind of voice. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't let me down yet uh, for for these tracks. And he won't. <laughs> no, no. I don't think he will. Uh, this next track, though, uh, mate, uh, is this one with someone else too? I can't remember. No. Um, but uh, we'll have another person at some point. This is uh, <clears throat> Grand Canyon, though. Uh, did that get quieter for everyone? Yes. Yes. Huh. Was that in the... Hold on one second. Is that in the track? Okay, whatever. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, my, my media player decided that it wanted to be quiet for a second. So, uh, but yeah, that was that was Grand Canyon. This song is very Bruce Springsteen of him. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can Nebraska see Nebraska style but from the name yeah. of the song. Sure, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. to, yeah. You love yeah. Me that way. And I think this is this is definitely one that was really depressing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I I'm trying oh. to figure out a different word, but depressing. But like, uh, really sad. Just me, I'm only me. Misery. Um, what was it? Um, and you used to know, love me that way, so you know how to love me that way. Just that, like, really, like, longing kind of, like, uh, uh, you know, maybe remembering a past flame kind of song, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Grand Canyon, I like as the, you know, being the the. Um, kind of device used in the song is like that's how far apart they are, you know. It's a funny line. It's a funny line to very be very literal in that way. Rather yeah. than it's not phrased like it's a metaphor. It's phrased like he's literally saying this. Yeah, uh, yeah. This yeah. is. I, I want the listeners to ring a bell every time I say this. This is yeah. one of the first bangers on this disc. This mm, is a mm, fucking mm. banger of a song. I yeah. love this. Song. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I said I can't remember which track I said banger on, but I did say banger at some point during the listen through. There's a couple. There's a couple. There's, on there's this. a couple. There's, yeah. there's a couple bangers yeah, yeah, on this yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Like this but the one, lead instrument work on this is 
very, very entertaining. It's very, very enjoyable to listen to. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I was thinking, like listening to songs like this and, um, you know, maybe Time Was Enough for Rock and We're Old, like mm-hmm. if you took certain songs of this disc and like put only those together, it <laughs> yes. would be like its own album, you know? Uh, no, you but, could you could make a legit twelve song album from each of these six, and they'd be like incredible yeah. twelve song albums. And instead, yeah, it's like that's kind still of what incredible. I was, yeah, but there's a lot of fuck. There's a lot of fluff in between. Yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a lot of fuck. The fluff. thirteen love song. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> studios studios must hate him. You know, like they're always no. like, "Come on, you got you got to pare this down, please." Like we can't market this oh, sixty nine songs. We'll make it more. But no, I mean, probably. <laughs> I love it, that. Yeah, you sell it for more money. Well, I mean, they love it if you're good at it. This album is but a like box otherwise, set now. they're like, no, fuck you. You get eleven tracks. That's the deal. <laughs> you know? That's the opener, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this was like four. How many albums did he done before this one? This is like four or five in for him. So he had already like Magnetic Fields was already pretty established as a band. When uh-huh, this album. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was able like, to maybe call, call some this shots. This is a Blake check. Yeah, he can do what he wants. Yeah, the studio yeah, yeah, knew yeah. what they were getting uh-huh. into at this point. They're yes. Like, yeah, we, we know X amount of, of copies. And the will producers. Move. His like, most yeah. famous. Fuck. Yes. Yeah. He's most yeah. well known for like writing a song about trains. They're like, okay, you can just like do your own thing at this point. Yeah. It's going to work out. Do you ever get like a, an Emmy or, or Oscar or anything like that? An Emmy? No, no, Oscar. It would be an Oscar, if anything. I mean, a Grammy? Right. You mean a Grammy? For like a Grammy? Saying, right? for like Grammy's a movie, music. Like music for a movie. Don't is oh, there like yeah, a, that's an Oscar. If you if you do scores and stuff, but... I feel like I feel like one. Of, well, oh, wait, never mind. You have to. That, I I just remember you can the win rule. A song. You, you have can to have do an yeah, original. To, it has to be original. It's got to be an original yeah. to the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. It has so to not, be made for the movie. That's why uh-huh, the bond. That's uh-huh. why bond. That's why bond themes can get big famous like musicians because they're always trying to write a big that's, Oscar song for the that's, movie. That's mm-hmm. probably literally why they keep doing it. That's yeah. probably the only reason they keep making. The, I mean, that's why they. Big, get, it helps to get those deal. people. I think. Yeah, 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 and it's kind of just a tradition at this point. Just like, oh, he's well, famous right now. Do a bond theme. I mean. The bond like thing's rip. No, it's, it's yeah, a great yeah, legacy a, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just guaranteed to sell millions and millions yeah. of copies. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like the one, yeah. I, I love how the, the latest one, like it was out like a full, like well. two years <laughs> or something before. No, of course not. Of course not. But like, but didn't they get like awards for it? Like before the movie came out? Yeah, or she something? was nominated for an Oscar yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a really weird circumstance. But I think only... I'm trying to remember how many have been nominated for an Oscar. I There's should a, know this. I covered I mean, this on my podcast. Well, some oh, what, what's his well, name? Don't Was it Paul to McCartney? That episode of Spoof Goofs and Novelty Songs. There you go. For that information. Uh, I don't remember which episode. No, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know if the that uh, Paul McCartney and Wings song got nominated, but I think Adele's for sure and Billie Eilish's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And then I don't think any of the other. I can't think of any other ones that would have gotten nominated. I like Jack. Not White's. the Weird Al one. <laughs> the weird album. Are we talking about Spyhard? Oh, his iconic man. James Bond spoof song. Oh man, I would love it if Spyhard. I would love it line. if he legitimately did a Bond theme. Just like, imagine like, opening to everyone in like, the theater, for an actual Bond like, movie a, for an no. actual Bond movie. No, I'm talking I mean, like it was I, for, like, a, spoof. It was no, for no, a James Bond spoof. But I'm saying yes. I think he's at the level now. Where he could, but he's like so culturally. <laughs> just imagine being a theater, like, all right, here's I mean, the Bond movie. All of a sudden, it kicks into that. Like, maybe what the next is happening. Maybe they do a fun. <laughs> maybe they do a fun, like you know, Spider-Man reboot with the Bond franchise, and he's in high school. Oh my god! Uh, oh god! <laughs> god, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, it would be the worst. No. Right now, there's someone already would, pitching that. I would be there though, opening night. I would absolutely no, be they, there to see that train wreck they, occur. They got to do a. Um, Roger Moore. They gotta do a Roger Moore type. They gotta get an old, mm. uh, more comedy kind of actor next. That's that. That's yeah. the right. That's the right route for the next Bond. I like the idea of Mr. going Bean. back to <laughs> sure. Get Rowan Atkinson. Get Mr. He's, he's not busy. He's yeah, not busy yeah. right now. No, no. Uh, but I, I want him to go back to the the like sixties and like uh, yeah, old days. They won't do that. They're not gonna do that. But the no, fun- Bond's gonna he's gonna dab. <sighs> Bond's going to sell NFTs in the next one. Oh, he's gonna no. Be, he's NFTs gonna, are going to be the big he's bad. On, he's on Twitter. Yeah, NFTs <laughs> will be the big bad. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> NFTs and crypto. It's going to somehow do Mr. something. Bond, I'm selling an NFT of a nuclear bomb, and there's nothing <laughs> you can do to stop it. He's like, oh, does that... 
Does that do anything? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they de- destabilize the world economy. You don't understand, Bond. <laughs> Leave the thinking to me. We'll drop the picture out of the planet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, uh so uh we got a couple more tracks for you guys. Uh there have been track. six Bond songs, by the way, nominated for six. an Academy oh. Award. What are they right. for? Best song. What are they for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they all for here? Yes, yes. We, we oh, gotta know what they're for before okay. we move in nine in sixty eight, uh Casino Royale, the the look of love. Oh. Uh, that's the uh, Woody Allen James Bond movie, right? I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, Weird. Live and Let Die, obviously. Mm, it was. Okay. 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 And wings. I was wrong. Um, Beauty well, Kill. Nobody, nobody does it better um, off the Spy Who Loved Me, 78. Okay. Thumbs down. Whatever. I don't remember <laughs> um, that one. So. For your <laughs> eyes, uh, yeah. 82, For Your Eyes Only, uh, Bill Conti. Okay. Oh, do, do, do. Skyfall, Adele. And oh, you mean that uh, the one from from uh, Madonna didn't get nominated? Yeah, Die Another Day. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, writings on the wall. Off uh, Spectre. Oh yeah, I'm thinking of the Grammys. Is what I was thinking of because I think. Uh, let me look quick. Do the Grammys do the movies though? Songs? They'll nominate. They nominate like a. They'll nominate a song. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, No Time to Die one in 2021. Yeah. Okay. By Billy, Jack- by Billie Eilish. That's Billie Eilish. Yeah, yeah. Adele Eilish. won for Skyfall. Yep. Yeah, they're they're doing good the last couple of ones, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you get the most popular artist in the world at the time to write it. Yeah, it's how you pretty, get pretty good uh, system. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, <laughs> there's no easy <laughs> way to transition into this track, though. This is uh, No One Will Ever Love You. The worst Bond movie ever. <laughs> no one. <laughs> yeah, the worst. <laughs> No one will ever love you for your honesty. Women just diving in the glasses of scotch. I'm just going to go just hide in a corner and cry now. <laughs> no big yeah, deal. No. Or anything. no, but this is this is like the Bond movie, I think, where uh, all of the Bond <laughs> ladies just completely ignore him and are uninterested entirely. Bond gets me too <laughs> yeah, said, yes, yes. fuck you, Bond. I mean, there, it, it's about time. It's about, I mean, he's done, a, I mean, he's done a lot of bad shit to a lot of ladies. Uh, <laughs> now we're just talking about Austin Powers. That's what Austin Powers is. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We need, really another, Austin Powers we need another Austin Powers film. No, we don't. Um, there's, we need there's another a, spoof. I just film. saw there's a commercial. There was like a yeah, trailer for a commercial today, for <laughs> fucking. My oh my god! What the commercial? Doctor Evil, Evil GM I commercial. I don't like it's not these. very good. It's not I don't very like good. These. The Home Alone one was good. All right, the Home Alone one was great. But sure. just stop, stop doing it. Hollywood, yeah. please. They're not going to stop. Hollywood, not no, they spend right. years so redoing movies. Chase. They're just going to start making those just in commercial form now. Cheaper's crime. Yeah. 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 We have enough idea for a full sells. movie. We'll just make a commercial out of it. No one will ever love your commercials, honestly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's the most brutal <laughs> fucking like, line, I think, in the album, maybe. Like, no one will ever love you, honestly. God, like, that's so depressing. No matter how Isn't you slice true? that, it's, it's true. just. It's it's so depressing. Or for your honesty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's uh yeah. Well then I'll lie to you. Yeah. I don't it's, like that either. Yeah. That's just no win situation there. Yeah, and no one will ever love you for your honesty as, as well is the other line. <laughs> but so you're not here to not make only my will no one love sincere. you honestly, but no one will even love you if you're honest. God. So fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> She's basically saying, fuck you. This song is just one giant middle <laughs> finger. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck, fuck you. Dog, fuck you. Not fuck you. Fuck you. Car. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> just, just fuck. But, um, but good. It's yeah. a great song. Anyway, a lot more, <laughs> yeah, a lot more sad stuff she on this side. She sings it very and melodically, is, uh, though, you know. This is the, uh, uh, what is this, uh, number seven. So this is the one... Where they're uh, some of the the notes for it, so they're kind of trying to channel a Stevie Nicks dreams kind you know? of thing. Yeah. Wow. See, that's I I would have said that as well. That's yeah. that's that's about 
Yeah. That was the positive note I was going to have for this. Yeah, so, well, yeah, because, yeah, yeah, I mean, Stevie Nicks and those guys get really, really deep into the, you know, sad aspects mm. of, uh, you know, um, being in a relationship. You know, the... the what? Uh, that band? No. <laughs> no, no, I mean, have you heard the... <laughs> Rudy, wrong, the it's yes, all love. Yes, the yes. One, it's all love yeah. on Rudy. They're, they're, they hate each they're other. kind of and... upset with each other, I believe. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's some tension there. There's, there's a bit listen, of tension in the studio. Most couples go, all right, we're splitting up. We should probably take some space from each other. <laughs> this band of couples said, no, we're going to work together for 18 hours a day for like a year. And Even we're going to produce like the greatest album ever. Even though they bought a place, all moved in together to record it together. Oh, my God. It's just the most like toxic thing you could possibly do. And then oh, so great, it's though. just a great album. Is it technically it's the, like, like the greatest Will breakup? anyone else ever like surpass that as a breakup album? I don't know. I don't think so. Like to have it, that it, many people actually you know, like a breakup in general, right? Like, yeah. like has there ever been a more productive breakup in the history of the world? No, no, Fleetwood no, Mac's no, breakups no, no, no. Each other. I agree because they all did it at the same time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it all crossed this. You know, they were the, like star crossed. Uh, the best ex line, the best line from the <laughs> podcast for you is like that. It was, it was like, uh, it was, it was like they were like. All living in the same house, but they were just leaving notes for each other on the, yeah, on the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like each song was like a note that they didn't want to actually like talk, say to they didn't one want to another. Say it to each other, but you yeah, had to get yeah, the yeah. emotion out. Uh -huh, you know? Yeah, they uh -huh. have magnetic letters that they're using on the fridge and they're rearranging <laughs> it so it sells fuck you and yeah, yeah. Things. But in like a really cryptic way because it was oh, always yeah, yeah. like you know metaphor <laughs> and, and stuff. Anyways, that was our Fleetwood Mac minute on yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, <laughs> listen to the podcast. It's, such a great it's album. like number like three or something. And like listen that. to Fleetwood Mac. Uh, yeah, if you don't cry while listening to it. Track eight. Another five years of your life. If you don't cry, it isn't love. If you don't cry, then you just don't feel it deep enough. <laughs> all right. These people are just all about the positive this is, messages. Man, just Pure eighties, just love, like, love. like sadness, sadness so, and so techno, and and yeah, it's it's this was the one where I was like, this is a banger. This was the first one I was like, this right mm. here, banger material for me. Mm. If you yeah. don't cry, it's just so classic eighties. It's just you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you not like this, this one as more, much? Uh, no, but but this is more in line <laughs> with their other albums, I would say too. So it okay. is. Well, because they were they started like in the eighties, right? So, yes, yes. um, they're kind of one of those kind of weird in between bands that like got a little bit of the eighties, a little bit of the nineties. Still doing kind of a high production value thing, but still doing like maybe more. Yeah, I don't know what to describe the nineties art, as artsy <laughs> stuff. Sure, art, art, yes, art, yes. Uh, art students. Art pop. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. College rock. Yeah, college rock. We listened to that Talking really Heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We listened to Talking Heads and REM. In our household. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There definitely was a, a period of that uh, for for a, a hot minute. Um, but yeah, yeah. These these they definitely like dip into that pure '80s sound every now and again. Um, you you know because uh, obviously since they've been recording since then they know the production techniques to make it sound right, which is always nice. Because um, uh, yeah yeah sometimes you know sometimes people try to get the '80s and it's like. It's just too like crisp and you know. Yeah. Or you just, they just tried way too hard and like just made it worse. Like, oh uh. yeah, yeah. It's just it's just just too noisy. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, enjoyed this one. Uh, I, I think that I was another thing I was thinking of is the "Boys Don't Cry" uh, song when I was looking at the mm, title. Sure. You know, if you don't cry, get some cure. Yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That seemed to be something people were talking about in the eighties. These these you know, band these bands are cousins to each other. I would say the Cure yeah. and the United Fields are they not probably, far off. Like they probably like opened for them, you know, at the tail end of the eighties. They both you know? got that real goth sound in their music, you know. Yeah, that's the, that's the, kind the, of real eighties yeah, goth gothy kind and of. And the sadness of the Smiths. Yeah, yeah, definitely. A little little more upbeat though. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like all the all the sadness is disguised. It's 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 like it's it's hidden away. Um, so mm -hmm. if you don't look at the lyrics, it's it's fine. Um, 
But uh, yeah, this next track I got for you, I have uh, uh, two tracks actually, and uh, I want to do a few transitions because uh, they have a few abrupt transitions. And uh, this one is "You're My Only Home," going into "Crazy for You," but not that crazy. But I just assume you didn't Because you are my only home I built a ship with my own hands To take us to the moon Boy. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to the moon. To the moon. Uh yeah, yeah. Just just one thing to another. <laughs> like you know? we're just we're just like at some of these songs just like there's not a lot to say. It's another <laughs> fine tune. Another, another fine job. Another fine job. Uh 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 Stephen Merritt, whom I have written down. Uh <laughs> another fine tune. Um but yeah, I, I like uh, I, I do like uh, some of the lyrics for uh, "Crazy for You," but not that crazy. But first, uh, "You're My Only Home." I want to talk about that one a little bit. That one's got like a really cool idea going on in it. I think, um, which is it's kind of uh, I feel like for me this track and then like nine, ten, and eleven kind of feel connected to me. Um, cause like this track personally or huh? personally, well, no, no, just, just, oh. I mean, like, I feel like they kind of, if you look at them together, it's almost like a, a story that a little mini arc. Yeah. 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 This, um, this album definitely has like, not, it doesn't do the cycles. I think the first, like you were saying the five song yeah. cycles in the first one, yeah. this one has more like a cohesive, like beginning and end uh-huh. section, I would say yeah. it's not cycling through the same ideas. It's kind of moving through movements more or less yeah, these, this, this middle of this album definitely has like a movement feel to it like yeah. absolutely short stories in the- yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and this is like kind of a section where there's i think like unrequited love uh stuff well not necessarily unrequited love but like um you know first of all with your only you're my only home like just stepping outside of the song that's a lot of pressure to put on a partner or whatever you know you're my only you're my everything you're my only home and then um, the next track, uh, "Crazy for You," but not that crazy, uh, can kind of continues that um, that uh, kind of discussion uh, where he's saying like, um, "What was it? Oh yeah, yeah." Kind of putting her on a pedestal. I pretended you were Jesus, or putting them on a pedestal. Uh, I pretended you were Jesus. Uh, you were just dying to save me. I stood beneath your window with my new ukulele. Um, so he's like. You know, he's in this track, especially like just putting all of this, like, um, you know, stuff that could be romantic in a certain context, but in the context of this track and the next track, it, it feels kind of like uh, maybe manipulative or something. But yeah, yeah, I got a lot out of these couple of tracks. These, yeah, yeah. these really spoke to me. But uh, yeah, yeah. So, so obsession is really the, the thing happening, I think, here. And then, um, yeah, the, the next track is, uh, uh, my only friend. And this is, I think maybe when, uh, that situation reaches its like conclusion where, uh, you know, whoever is like, you know, this is too much. I need space. And then they, you know, hitting critical mass in the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, this is just, this is just too much. Abort, you know? abort. <laughs> abort. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this is my only friend. Billy, you're a miracle. God knows I need one. Sing me something terrible that even dawn may come. You and me, we don't believe in happy endings. We are, we are just keeping that happy train rolling, kids. <laughs> Happy it's Valentine's just always just a little Day. Nugget. Just a little nugget. Jeepers, yeah. crime and Oh yeah, Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's why we're doing the love yeah, stuff. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Right, we do themed stuff. Shout out to my lady um, love. I do I do not feel any way about you like these songs do. <laughs> I mean, some I, of them are, are nice, but... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You know. That's actually how I proposed to my wife. I just made her listen to this entire three-hour-long album. Yeah, there you yeah. go. And and I like, love you so, like I love jazz. This is yes. how I feel. Yes? No? Huh? So yes, no. Checkbox. Yes. <laughs> Hand her a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, I gave her... I gave her uh, what's the thing called? The Like the... Uh, where you flip the little yeah, paper one, bag. Two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks what like a little paper what football thing. God, what is that called? I don't know. I wasn't cool enough to, uh, to pass I didn't know they had a name. I thought they were just like these little... <laughs> no, it has a name. God, what is it called? I'm oh, sure it's a super it. awesome name. <laughs> I'm sure the, the name, by the way, a real good payoff for me. Exactly. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure that <laughs> once like you a, spend like a half hour like, of Googling and you finally find it, <laughs> it'll be worth it. Uh, <laughs> whatever some fifth grader called it back in the 80s. Yeah, well, I was, I was gonna say there's probably different names throughout the years. I would think, you know, every every like four or so fortune teller. What? Oh that's yeah, because well, I mean, I guess kind they of they are yeah. based on the how you are based of, on yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess that tracks. Um, but like, do you let me yes no? Then you just check out the box. Like <laughs> having in one box is just somewhere else on the page. Like <laughs> it's like, like aw. It's like I don't know about this. Um, but, uh, yeah, this one's talking about, uh, uh, referencing Billie Holiday, though, uh, which is, you know, an amazing fucking, you know, artist out there that I don't think we've covered yet on the podcast, but, oh. um, but yeah, we definitely have to get to some Billie Holiday, but no concept albums in Billie Holiday's discography. No. Yeah. Well, with, with, um, with people that don't have proper concept albums, we'll do like their best or most famous work or gotcha. something yeah. yeah 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 so we'll we'll find we'll find the best of, of billy holiday yeah, you there. just kind of have to slightly justify it you're we, just like yeah, oh, yeah. the concept is it's we'll really create good. a concept <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean before like the 50s or whatever it's pretty slim pickings for legitimate <laughs> concepts you know we have sure. found some though yeah yeah we Frank have said, i'll do it well i mean oh, the, yeah. the concept albums were all like musicals and shit you know what right. i mean or they were like, like <laughs> They were novelty songs, for lack of a better. Yes. I mean, they, they were like yeah, a collection yeah, yeah. of yeah. like goofy bullshit. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm doing a character who's singing songs for twelve tracks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, once we get into some Frank Zappa, we will get into yeah, some sure. of that territory. Yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I uh, since we had Brack on, I've like kind of brushed up a little bit more on novelty song history. Oh. I guess. Tin Pan uh, Alley, all yeah, the classics. Yeah, Tin Pan Alley that came up uh, yeah. the the last Brack ep Brack episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had Brack on he, twice. He just, by he the just way. loves all novelty song stuff. Like he just, that's just what he loves to talk about and uh, get into. So, uh, yeah, that's what I, I messaged you at one point, like to be like, "Hey, yeah, he'd be perfect for you guys' podcast." I think it was we're like, like after "Oh, it's, we it's just done. Ended. We're, we're <laughs> we not." <just> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "Oh no." <laughs> Honestly, like all the novelty song stuff from that era, like yeah. 60s, 50s, and before, is really great. Like it, they were yeah, all hits yeah. and like hugely popular songs. Yeah, uh, yeah, and there's a reason for it. That that was what music used to be more. Well, it was it was a family friendly, sure, uh, yeah. usually a uh, uh, song that yeah, was funny, the but you know yeah. not too edgy that uh, the whole family uh, couldn't listen like in. Alan sometimes. Sherman, who has the um, "Hello Mother, Hello Father," like all the like old oh comedy my songs. God, too. I yeah. love that song. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! You okay? I, you... <laughs> you all right? Yeah. I'm fine. Oh man, that hit you. <laughs> that joke hit you he hard. Loves, he loves hello, mother, hello, father, way too much. Yeah, yeah, hello, yeah. mother, hello, father. Here I, I am, am. Camp, Camp Granada. Granada. Camp is very <laughs> entertaining, and they say that we'll have fun once it stops raining. <laughs> oh, that's, goes that's on and on and on. Novelty. Great. Yeah, yeah. We got kids into camp. Kids in the camp. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it was for. Yeah, <laughs> all time yeah. high of registration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. This this track though. Before we move on to the next one, this is uh uh. It's basically just kind of a, a, a dude, kind of being depressed at the bar. Uh, you know. Boy, I can I relate like to this that. This is like someone sitting at a bar listening to Billy Holiday and and drinking. Inner and monologue thinking, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inner monologue playing. Um, hey, Lady Day, can you save my life again? My only love has gone away. Will you be my only friend? So, yeah, yeah. 
we've all been there. You know, sometimes you're in a bad, you're, you're, you're just down and you just need to put on like the right person to like bring you back. Um, Throw some quarters in that yeah. jukebox, play some Billy, grab yeah. yourself a drink. And... But my only friend is a little, you know, a little dramatic, but you know, whatever. He understands me. <laughs> she understands me. Billy Holiday. Billy! Billy! <laughs> <laughs> I just hit him in the bar, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, this next track uh, is track twelve, and we'll, we'll listen to this one and take a quick break. Uh, this is going to be "Promises of Eternity." Promises, promises. No seven, no eight and a half, no nine and no ten. All numbers and no mystery, no promise. Of Also, the exact, <laughs> the exact middle of the album, the 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 sixty nine album, yes, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, I don't We're know the, if he thought about that at all. Probably not. We're the middle but, of uh, sure darkness. Yeah, yeah. This uh, promises of eternity is like the thing that ties everything together. Uh, I feel like this was a real neat Neil Diamondy one though. We were talking about a little bit mm-hmm. before the, oh, before yeah. the podcast. A real and uh that middle register kind of hits that Neil Neil Diamond kind of vibe. I was just going to start singing Sweet Caroline at the top of my lungs, but I'm not going to do that. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, you, right. you, guys back. Did, you guys yeah, did it yeah. for me. No, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's uh-huh, fine. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have neighbors. <laughs> they, don't, they don't need to hear me. Come <laughs> to eternity. Yeah, we used to do that at the warehouse sometimes, right? Every oh, whenever yeah. that sweet Caroline would come on the radio, everyone would do ba 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 together. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. You got Any group you setting, got that to. always happens. That's what yeah. you do. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, don't, that's like, why what, it still gets played at weddings. You do People yeah. that like that song, they like we, going ba ba ba. They we do. do it at the yeah. pool. Touching me, <laughs> touching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's no better than uh, what's that Todd Rundgren song that uh, the the one that gets played at? Uh, all right. We're all all right. Not that one. No, oh, no, that's, 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 that's every show. That's the that's every show. That I don't think on. that plays at, at weddings, but that is a Todd Rundgren <laughs> song. Though. Uh, if that played at uh, a wedding, I'd be so stoked. Is uh, that the the Go Pack Go? Oh, what's the what's the what is that song? Why can't I think of the Todd Rundgren song right now? God, I am useless I, today. I wish that I knew any Todd Run Run Gun Rungen Rundgren Rundgren. Okay. It's I a really it's a hard name. Drum so. all day. That sounds like a George Lucas <laughs> creature. Yes. Rundgren. That's yes. Todd Rundgren. I yes. don't know that. Mm-hmm. That's like an every sporting. <laughs> yes, yes. But people yeah. love that song, but they love it because it's like the the sports thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. man, that song yeah. you can really just drink to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that wait, I want to rock and roll all night and party every day. That's not no, kiss. That's no, kiss. that's kiss. That's kiss. Oh wait, this you said a different song. I don't want to play. I want. I just want to bang oh. on your drum all day. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They're those yeah. guys. Okay. I don't want to work. That's yeah. what it is. Take it away, yeah. John. I just <laughs> want to bang on your he drum all day. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's true. I'll put He's some drums behind that. Yeah, there you go. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, 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 the classic Neil. Classic Neil. The classic Neil. He's, he's you know, I mean, if you're going to do 69 love songs, you got to at least try to, to do a, a Neil-esque track. You know what I mean? I mean he's, 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 one the, he's one of the kings dummy. of love songs, you know? Sure. Um, yeah, if you yeah. say so. I, I mean, that's what I'm told. <laughs> um, oh, and this... It's uh, better this... way new and you pick out. <laughs> oh, man. And this, this line references, uh, if anyone cares out there, this line that I chose for the clip references the, the movie Where Seven. Where am I? The, uh, Eight the, and the movie Eight and a Half by mm-hmm. Fe- Federico uh, Fellini. Uh, the Broadway musical Nine, based on Fellini's Eight and a Half. Oh, Bo Derek's Ten. And uh, Bo Derek's Ten, who uh, film starring Dudley Moore, who plays an aging sexist looking for his perfect ten of a woman. That's pretty much just Dudley Moore in general. In oh, film. okay, yeah. That's just a in all auto, movies, autobiography. I think, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's track twelve. Uh, Promises of a uh, of eternity, like. It's kind of like a uh, like a like a wedding song or a, a, a proposal type song, maybe uh, if you want to look at it like that. But yeah, lots you know, of promise. Good that it's it's good that it's right here in the middle. You know, tying everything together. 
Um, but uh, yeah, when we get back, we got 11 more tracks for you guys. Uh, so uh, yeah, don't go away. Uh, this is going to be uh, the last uh, the last part of Magnetic Field 69 Love Songs Disc 2. Brad's brother sketch here, and uh, I just wanted to check in with everyone and let you know that I'm okay. Uh, this is iteration 8 of the ad, and uh, I've been compensated for it fairly. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's been, it's been a hard week. Uh, let's just power through this. So there's this app that's totally free that exists for making podcasts in one easy place. Hold on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, whether you have a computer or a smartphone, you can record it and then it distribute your podcast to places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. <laughs> I can't do this. I just, I've never seen Brad that angry before. It really shook me up. He's right, though. I'm, I'm lucky he's even paying me for this. <laughs> Uh, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. The Album Concept Hour. Uh, welcome back, everybody, to the Album Concept Hour. Uh, I am your host, uh, Brad LeBaron. Uh, I won't I won't bore you with all of our names, but we do have uh, uh, Martin Kazabowski here as our guest. Uh, Hello. From, from uh, Spook Scoops and Album <laughs> Songs, which you can still listen to. Redacted. You know, I mean, they may have stopped, but, you know, you can listen to... There's a hundred episodes of that you can go back and check out any of them you want. Are there exactly one hundred? There are exactly one hundred episodes. Oh, okay. Yes. So you, did you guys push on to the one hundred, or did you? We just made that decision, just like, hey, let's just we're gonna we were we Strong made the number. call around. Yeah, episode ninety two. We were like, let's just do enough yeah. to get us to a hundred, and then uh, yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Are you still in touch with those guys? Oh yeah, of course. They're two yeah, of my best yeah. friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew them long before the podcast. The podcast was just yeah. a fun thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. It's it's great when you can do it with uh, with people that you've you've known for a while. You get those yeah, it gives you a weird... set in chemistry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. In, inside jokes that you have to listen to like uh, <laughs> several podcasts to even understand. You know, I try to avoid that as much as possible. Yeah, and I got yeah, yelled yeah. at quite often for making too many local references on the podcast. <laughs> oh man, I, I try to make local references on on this hey. podcast, but you guys um, are all in Madison, right? We're in Madison. Yep, yep, oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Do I would you, reference. You... There's a uh, specific uh, novelty product shop. I would call it. There's two actually in Milwaukee that are really great, which is Fish Burgers in River West Milwaukee. Go to Fish Burgers if you want a little fun little gift while you're in okay. Milwaukee, or Art Smarts Dart Mart, where you can get all kinds Art of Smarts, goofy Dart gag Mart. gifts and dart related things. Oh man. I remember when those used to be like more common, those kinds of stores. Yeah. Well, because they don't, they don't make money. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, it's, I feel like that's one of those things that like uh, is, a, is a casualty of the internet a little bit, you know? Yeah, for sure. You know, people usually find out about the novelty items from like yes. you know, a Facebook post or a Twitter post or something. Wish.com. Yes, yes, wish, wish.com. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, go, go support your local novelty shop if you have one out there, guys. Go, go find hey. them and, and buy some weird. Uh, I have whoopee cushion. Whoopee cushion. Yeah. Buy a couple of whoopee, whoopee cushions. You know, who doesn't love a good whoopee cushion? Who doesn't love a good whoopee cushion? A classic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, we got, uh, we got 11 tracks for you guys left for the 69 love songs we're trucking through it just another 69 love songs just another, <laughs> just another 69 Out love and down songs. in 8.4 to me <laughs> but uh yeah so we have uh we just left off of uh, promises of eternity and uh, we're moving on to uh i made another transition track for this uh 13 and 14 wow. um this is uh world love leading into washington dc Stuck in some boredom I even I know the solution Love, music, one and revolution Oh, 
Oh, Mickey, you're so fire. You're so yeah, fire. You're going going hey, Mickey, yeah. hey, hey, yeah. Mickey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but that's a, that's a good call. So I teased this earlier, but this is the song that or Washington, D.C., I think, is the song most people, I think, know from this album. Book of okay. Love is technically more well-known, I guess, but Washington, D.C. Yeah. is the one that, like, I've heard I had heard tons of times before listening to this whole album. Because um, huh. I feel like it's like, it was a very... It got a lot of play on your alternative rock stations back huh. in the day and currently still too. Yeah, I would say. Okay, okay. Nice. Like I, I, I never ran into this one, but oh, um, it's a classic. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's possible that I heard it and never knew it was uh, associated with this band uh, too. But because um, you know, it sounds different enough, it could be just it could a, be anything. A different yeah, for band. sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Just be like. Advertisement for Washington D.C. Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, exactly. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, it's I need to buy a sarcastic. ticket. I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I will <laughs> say, it's... yeah. The the track on the end there, the world love, you know, ends with a revolution, and then it rolls into W A S H H I D. Yeah, it's great. That's why it's a good call to do that transition. It's really funny. Yeah, yeah. Well, like this, the because these are both kind of jokey tracks. um this first one is uh, World Love is kind of uh, it's kind of poking fun at uh, the world music that was popular in the 80s and 90s. Like you, you too, I think, dipped into that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, different, you know, groups were like, you know, I mean, where the streets have no names. Yeah, exactly. Probably That's more Oxford Babies, Europa era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those ones. Yeah. I remember the Octoon Baby episode music. of, of you talking you two to me. Yes. Um, <laughs> World love, like it also had a very like talking head theme, like the guitar yeah. and all that, like mm-hmm, strumming mm-hmm. to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, there. It's it's another one of these like like uh, uh, genre jokes that he's doing, which you were you you said you couldn't find a term for yet, right? <laughs> these genre joke things. Because it's not really. Not a spoof. Right? It's not a parody. It's, it's not trying yeah. out and out to be like I'm making fun of this thing. It's kind of doing an homage. It's just an homage. An, um, an homage. Say. An homage. Yeah. A, a lightly a, humorous a, homage. A funny homage. Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. Funny okay. seems a little strong for, for it, but yeah. humorous. Oh, yes. it's hilarious. World <laughs> yeah. Love. I was laughing, laughing the whole oh. time when I was listening to this. <laughs> oh God, it's getting all of us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but then, um, yeah, then and then Washington D.C. Like it goes into this just you know over the top like you know cheering number, which you rarely mm-hmm. hear in songs except for you know of oh. course the one you mentioned, you know the the most Tony famous Basil. one. Uh, wait, what? Who's actually a former name, cheerleader? Too. Oh, really? No, oh, oh. Basil. I mostly just know it from the Bring It On uh, soundtrack. Of but, course you do. Uh, it, it was the, <laughs> the, the credits uh, theme of that movie. Great movie. Great movie on its own. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, Washington, D.C. is a paradise to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, not because of the grand old seat or precious freedom of de- democracy. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's just where my baby, where my baby lives. That's all. Mm-hmm. So... This yeah. is banger number two on the album. Yeah. And I would say yeah. tracks 14 through 22 are so strong. Like, it's the strongest chunk on the three records, I think, is these next three songs, in my opinion. And everyone's like, yeah. agree with me. I yeah. got some hot takes. I'm a hot take guy. Well, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, there are a couple of bangers on this half. I will agree. Yes. Um, like the, the, the one with Jesus in it, I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of fun ones on this half. I I, I agree. Spin um, fire, hot fires coming yeah, out. These next yeah. couple songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> coming in hot. Um, this next mm-hmm. track, for instance, this is uh oh yeah, the long forgotten fairy tale. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, another banger. That one's so yeah, good. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, like it's, it's every now and again when these kind of, kind of songs happen, I'm like, all right, this is this is who Stephen Merrill must be more, <laughs> you know? Because I'm always trying to, I, I guess I'm always trying to figure out, like, all right, who is this Stephen Merrill, really? You know? Who's the man behind the music? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is he is he is he actually depressed or is he are these all jokes? These all just just fun jokes. He's right? a good old time, you know. He's I think it's both. I think he's a depressed guy who's making fun of himself, kind of. Yeah. Probably, probably. God, so yeah. hanging out with yeah. Trevor. As, uh, I mean, they do say that you know uh, comedians are like the most depressed people around or whatever. Sure, you know. And musicians who are writing comedic songs <laughs> got to be even more depressed. Oh yeah, that's that's right. That's like two categories of of, a lot of depressing uh, uh, yeah, lines of work. So See, maybe maybe that's what we need to be encouraging Trevor to do. Oh, do do some stand up. Yeah. Oh, he'd be great for stand up. Yeah, he'd be good. He was good if he could go in front of crowds. Yeah. 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 yeah Trevor's our. <laughs> that's, right. that's an Trevor. important thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've seen him in front of a crowd, but like, I think if he he'd, he'd, he'd be comfortable there, yeah, he'd be good. But yeah, Just that's face the, your back to them. That's our problem solved. There Jim we go. That's what yeah. I should try. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, if I ever went in and tried to do that, I would just be like reading verbatim. From my notebook, I would never ever. Lo- I would Thank never you. look Good night. up. Just walk up. <laughs> my entire career, I would never look up for my notebook. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, whenever I've been in front of crowds, I just run. I just like I'm talking so fast, and I'm just like not paying attention to the crowd. That's how I've always gotten through it. Just bulldoze your way through. I don't know. Yeah, well, for for me, uh, I uh, I have a very specific uh, type of memory loss where. Uh, uh, when I'm in front of more than five people, I have no short-term memory whatsoever, and everything just goes out of my mind. Uh, so that's why I do podcasting is usually like less than that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, generally, if I'm doing a speech or something, like, you know, know right, that I probably right. have it written down. You know, <laughs> I'll have a speech writer in that case. Um, but uh, yeah, so 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 for yeah, sorry. Long Forgotten Fairy Tale. There's a band called So Long Forgotten that I like, and I keep on wanting to say So Long <laughs> Forgotten Fairy Tale. Um, but yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> so God, long. God damn it. Long Forgotten Fairy Tale, guys. Let's talk about it. Um, what do you guys think of this fucking track? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Long Forgotten Fairy Tale is it's in your 80s eyes. Eighties band that like the the beat and everything's yeah very eighties. Uh, I can place it, but it's uh it's been bugging me like during the listen through and then it's been again like I can't it's recall. The it's just, a little it's too... just in my head and I can't like get it out. Like <laughs> what what you think this like sounds like? Yeah 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 yeah. It does it sound like a lot of eighties stuff, but I just can't yeah, just lodge yeah. that part of my brain right now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it is it is a banger, um, and banger. Uh, you should you should go check this one out. I think if you're if you're wanting to listen to just just some select tunes or something, you don't want to listen to all sixty nine. You know, don't don't skip this one. This is definitely one of the ones. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, this next one, this next one's got a cool premise. Uh, just in general, this is uh, "Kiss Me Like You Mean It." Jesus and Mary May. Yeah. Yeah. Hanging out in the garden. Yeah. I, li- I like I like saucy Jesus, you know? <laughs> Come in here and kiss me like you mean it, girl. Boy. Jesus like, has some swagger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that Jesus Man, swagger. Man, you know Jesus had a little <laughs> swagger. Yeah, yeah. No, it's in the song. Jesus was a nice yeah, person, yeah. but man, you don't you don't get to walk around Jesus was a nice he did person. With, he was with a nice guy. <laughs> He's a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, just, the, yeah, I, I think go... Jesus was more of a badass than they want us to know. Well, I mean, he flipped tables and shit. You know, <laughs> he like, yeah, about... yeah, yeah. He, he had cursed a, tab... a tree. He cursed he cur- a tree. He cursed a tree. Yeah. He yeah, cursed dude. a name. Like who curses a tree? But he did it, you know. He's like, I don't even care guy. what people think about him. He's a mad lad. There's like, there's like, <laughs> there's like recordings of him like killing a recordings. kid. Recordings. Recordings. <laughs> so you know what I mean. Written Bible, bar, written Bible stuff that's not in the Movies Bible. Movies are a lot older than you think, Mark. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Thomas Edison is from the, the 1900s. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wait, BC. Wait, B- BC was the joke wait, I was trying yeah. to make. BC. Nine, BC. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, one. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. ACBC. 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 Yes. <laughs> If that's not already like a spoof a cover band of some kind, <laughs> that should be 
uh, that that would oh, work. What is there is a there's I'm just ABC. Just ACDC. me googling yeah yeah stuff all all episode. There is a famous ACDC cover band. I don't think they're called. No, they're called the Dirty Deeds. Lame. What? Lame. Really? Ah, uh, they could have they could have done something with the letters. You know? We are the Hey Chudes. That's our cover band name. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Dirty Deeds, and we're very cheap. <laughs> we're so cheap, <laughs> and we're affordable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they were trying to imply. You actually, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they want wish. you to know that subconsciously <laughs> when seeing the, the the title. Yeah, we have ACDC at home. <laughs> but, um, no, what this I love about deeds. what I like about this track though is it's you know it's kind of you know people talk about like uh, uh, you know Christian theme songs about God and Jesus and how like if you like just there's the South Park episode about it where like if you just change the context it could be like a love song you know mm-hmm. I feel like this is like doing exactly that but like taking it to that stage where it becomes a love song actually. You know what I mean? Like this could easily just be, you know, another Jesus song that's just, you know, church appropriate. But like, um, it takes it to an actual like love song place, which I think is oh, really oh, fun. very. Yeah. Kiss me like you mean it. I, I yeah. don't think it's very descriptive. There, you know, it's very <laughs> non-descript. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, Jesus is in here like fucking Clint Eastwood or something. Just like, <laughs> kiss me like you mean it. <laughs> but that'd, that'd be more like, um, who's that guy from Casablanca? Uh, I'm Bogarts. Bogart. That feels like more of a Bogart thing. Kiss me like you mean it. Um, but uh, yeah, that was uh, Shirley Sims uh, on the the vocals for that that track. Uh, we didn't mention it before, but uh, a couple times you've heard uh, Claudia uh, Gonson, uh, mm-hmm. which was uh, who was featured a few times in Disc One. So um, yeah, a lot of, I love that he you know lets a, a lot of different vocalists come in and. Uh, have the the you know main stage um, there's a lot of guests on this album it's it's yeah. i think claudia is the only full-time member of the band who sings on this album but the rest of them are all pe- friends and stuff coming in to do one does, does friends, he so. generally have a lot of guests on 69 just, guest songs <laughs> 69 guests and just for the concept <laughs> albums he's done because i know the other two i think he's got two other ones that are like similarly super super long uh i believe those yeah. also have guest singers on them too yeah um, yeah that's but probably, otherwise, no, probably I think smart. he sings otherwise for the most part. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's probably smart to get a little bit of, a little bit of help with this. It just breaks it up, honestly. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I love yeah. his voice, but his 69 voice is like nine songs. Of bass. Here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Singing. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't there's definitely some of these things like he couldn't sing that at all. No. In that register in right, any right. any closeness, you know. Um, be a whole different take, a whole different album. Yeah. He is my <laughs> life. <laughs> me like you mean it. It's a Christmas yeah, yeah. I mean it, yeah. boy. Hell yeah, yeah I want that like one. That. Yeah. I want that mm. one. Um, but yeah, this next track is... Uh, track boy, that would, that would, would not the... be a route we'd want to go with Jesus on the podcast. <laughs> <either. laughs> um, but yeah, this next one is uh, the longest uh, track on disc two. This was uh, uh, a little over five minutes. This is Papa Was a Rodeo. Never stuck around long enough for a one night stand Before you kiss me you should know Papa was a rodeo Listen Mary, he's a whole before rodeo. you kiss me, <laughs> I gotta go do some things I'm a, po- I'm a one man rodeo I'm a rodeo I am a rodeo. Jesus was a rodeo. <laughs> and his mom's a rock and roll band. Yeah. Another very goofy song. This song is very silly. And I think part of the joke is how long it is. Like, I do think part of the thing is like, this song is super long and there's very little harmony, but it's right at the end of the song. There's like a 30 second harmony where, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I believe what's her name. Yeah. Sims comes back in at the end again. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. harmonize just for like 10 seconds at the end of the song. And that's it. And I think it's really funny that they do. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it, it, I think it does seem a little silly on the surface, but, uh, there was a someone's notes on the genius kind of made the argument that this was like a you know a deeper song than it, it seems on the surface. And uh, one I think of the it's things, both though. I think it's like deep oh, and yeah, also yeah. making a joke of it a little bit. Yeah. Ah yes yes yes. Just in the you know, Stephen Stephen Merritt style. 
Right. You know, yeah. But um, it's it's uh, it's a, a kind of a somber tune. Like I think when he's you know, uh, oh, there's actually a verified annotation with this one um, from the magnetic field. <coughs> Uh, the rodeo and rock and roll were meant to be a metaphor, but it turns out my parents were in a rock and roll band for a few weeks in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands in 1964. My scruffy father sang and played guitar. My beadnik mother played tambourine and maybe back up in like Betty and the Archies. Uh, I wonder what they sounded like. But that's actually not the note that I was looking for. <laughs> um <laughs> This other person uh, is uh, suggesting that, like, uh, um, this saying that Papa was a rodeo and Mama was a rock and roll band is kind of his shorthand of telling his his lover, like, um, I have a I've had a tough childhood and I'm going to be a difficult lover, you know, mm-hmm. um, which is, you know, pretty yeah. ser- serious stuff, you know, serious conversation stuff. Right, but it's like in a way that's it's being said in a way that's a very like silly way of putting that. It's a very very like, much yeah, yeah. It's yeah because it's just like Papa was a rodeo. Like yes. just just looking at the, the title, phrasing it's just like, is very interesting. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, if he he does a few yeah, this a few times I think where it's just this kind of uh like like the Grand Canyon thing kind of mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know it's it's like not like stated like outright but you kind of get it from the context yes right yeah 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 turning metaphor into literalism which is turning it back into a metaphor and phrasing things in a way to kind of complicate those things but also say it in a way that's like sort of jokey but also yes has a more deep meaning yeah he's definitely a a a writer like uh, yes very much so you know yes yeah no these songs are all like i mean (laughs) i'm a little biased but lyrically the songs are all like very very well written songs yes yeah, I think I think there's some that are absolutely well written. I yes. think some are like uh, track two, not so yeah. much. Well, but, <laughs> that's just um, him fucking making a bunch of bullshit. Hey, man, but... that's that's a, no, I know it's a not bad everything example, can be a winner here. It's just, it was written perfectly. To... Songs. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. written perfectly to get what it was supposed to do. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. it, it got it got my attention. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Definitely got my attention. <laughs> But um, yeah, this next track um, is another another kind of somber uh, idea. This is epitaph for my heart. Yeah, epitaph for my heart. I believe that song also starts with a fake reading of a warning label. Yes, that's uh, brilliant. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, the word caution. breaks into this. Yes, yeah, caution to prevent electric shock. Do not remove cover. No user serviceable parts inside. First servicing to qualified service personnel. It's great if you ever sing a song about a broken heart. That's a really fun, funny way to do it. Yes. Yeah, it, you're right. It's a joke. It's a big joke. Yeah, I was looking at this like, oh, uh, he's small let's, machine let, let's now. This than man, from my heart, could Cupid put too much poison in the dart? Like, uh, he's talking about someone spreading his ashes all over to- over the uh, the Brill Building, which is a famous like uh, a building for different songwriters uh, that went through there. But um, yeah, but he's making a, he's making a goof here. He's making a goof here at the top of the show. Sure. Well, he's like using sort of how to write jokes as a way of writing songs in certain senses. Like, yeah, he is using like doing a take and doing like parodies of things as a way of doing more depressing stuff, which also sort of makes it funny in a way, but also yeah. is like a, a way to do something poignant, also. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he, seems, he seems pretty good at that. Yeah. In general, it seems to be his, uh, his talent in songwriting. Um, but yeah, Braille building important. Uh, who else we has have, come through there? Who else has come through there? Well, we got, uh, what do we got? Uh, I'm sure genius knows. Um, we got Carol King, Butch, Burke, ba- Bacharach, Burt Bacharach, 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 Bacharach. Can, and Neil Diamond. Mm. Yeah, the yeah. Braille building. The Braille yeah. building. 
Yeah. There's there's actually again, I mean, I've referenced this before on the podcast, but I'll say it again. There is a oh, dang, is it on Hulu or Netflix? It's Hulu. What is there a show about the yeah, Bill? Yeah, well, there, there's like a, it's like a whole thing on music and like life events, and there's a whole uh, like and there's a whole episode devoted to the Brill Building. Okay. And it talks about Carol King, James Taylor. Came out oh, vinyl, yeah. the, I think. Yeah, uh, the the whole factory oh, that they had there. The the show vinyl from yeah. What was it? FX. Uh, HBO. HBO. Yeah, I've heard about that show. Hollywood Handbook put out a only vinyl episode of their podcast. <laughs> In which they mostly riffed on <laughs> that show, <laughs> and then uh, I right. I uploaded it and it got taken <laughs> that down. Sound right? Uh, boo. <laughs> <laughs> uploaded yeah. it to where? Uh, I uploaded it to SoundCloud as a. Uh, I, I did commentary uh, okay. on on top of it <laughs> as as like you know. <laughs> Uh, 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 Triumph at Comic Con, you know, sure. like there. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, I basically was just trying to put out the shittiest version of it I could. And, uh, them, yeah. and about half of the fandom was totally about what I was doing, and half of the <laughs> fandom absolutely hated me for doing this. Sounds like, that so sounds I, like Hollywood Handbook. I, so there I you go. divided, <laughs> yeah, the Facebook group. Not just the internet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I had to, I had to go, go uh, 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 off into the Discord so I could get away. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, this is uh, uh, not a Hollywood Handbook podcast. But um, this next track we have for you guys is Asleep and Dreaming, track 19 on disc two. And we were dreaming on a yellow submarine. <laughs> yellow, a yellow submarine. submarine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Asleep and dreaming. I think this, I thought this was a sweet song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, it is. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a little bit of what uh, uh, accordion going on. Yeah, I was gonna say I like that. I like that little accordion in yeah. the background. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I could not think of what that was either. Yeah, I couldn't remember the other night. Squeeze box. Yeah, the, yeah. the squeeze box. But I do, I do, back up. I do like, like his vocals on this. It's very <laughs> like sixties nice, ish. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is kind of getting into almost that book of love uh, range um, with his vocals, which is yeah, really really sweet spot for his mm-hmm. his vocal range. Um, and that's uh, Daniel Handler on the accordion, by the way. Um, good job, Daniel. Good job, Daniel. And he he did the arrangement as well. So God damn, Daniel. he did a lot for this song. Oh, that's I didn't even realize that's the guy that's the Lemony Snicket guy. <laughs> Wait, what? I was like, why do I know that name? Like, that's the writer of Lemony Snicket, Daniel Handler. He's the he's the writer of. Yes, he wrote a series of unfortunate events <laughs> and all the wrong questions. Is this the same guy? Yes, it's the same guy. Mm-hmm. Why? Would... I completely forgot that. <laughs> why is he involved in this? <laughs> Who the hell knows? Who that's, the hell knows? That's. <laughs> That is the most He's random grand place for him so, to in be. In other words, reaching out to our fandom, if there's anybody that can answer this question for us. Why? It's funny, he was, wasn't a well-known musician until he had done this. Like he had, He's friends with Merritt, it seems like, and he had he's appeared on other Stephen Merritt projects, but huh. this was like his first like big break was like musically. It was like doing this this one accordion piece on this song, on this album, was like the thing that got him. It's all it takes. And this was- yeah, I guess. And this was before that was before a series of unfortunate events, right? I believe that was in the 2000s. So. That was like that was when my little brother week. was in 1999. It first published, yeah. Oh, really? Okay, right before the 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So he pre 9 11. This is his like really rise to to man. That was fortunate. This guy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Learn something new every day, folks. Yeah. Yeah. 99 was before 9 11. <laughs> Who knew? Um, but yeah, so far away. So far away. We were, we were, we were all concerned about Y two K at that point. You know, it's true. We, were, we were worried about in the year two thousand. We were all saying, 
Yeah, yeah. In the year two thousand, we weren't thinking about a series of unfortunate events that was going to start on yeah. September eleventh. Uh huh. Oh wait, what? Before September eleventh, <laughs> did they just choose to release on on that day? They got some. <laughs> No, I'm saying they were. Never mind. <laughs> just, it was just unfortunate breakers. news. Yes, yes, it was. Oh, That's, oh, yeah. Mm? That yeah. was that was an event that was unfortunate. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was what yeah. I'm saying. It was an event, and it was quite unfortunate. I think yes. you're right. Um, yeah. Sorry for not getting that. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> this it next least... track goes into uh, 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 the sun goes down and the world goes dancing. I think you're totally right that this second half is is better. Like, there's uh, so far most of these tracks I've listened to on this second half of the podcast I've enjoyed. There's not as much of the fuckery happening. Yeah, it just seems yeah. more focused. I don't know if it's better. It's just that it's more. There's just these are good. These are just very good, consistently good songs. I, I, I can yeah. honestly yeah. say I can't wait to see. Like, and I know we're gonna have to wait like a year or so yeah, again. Yeah, wait another year. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of can't wait to see what the third part's gonna I'm be. Curious. Don't touch it until then. I'm, You're not I allowed will, to. Oh, I won't. I will not. I, I, I won't have yeah. any temptation. <laughs> it's a rep gift. Yeah. You have to wait for a whole year. I'm like, oh, I can. I'll shake it. <laughs> I'll yeah. shake it a little bit. What is there's it? There's some bangers on that one too. There's, there's, there's like? that one still has some good stuff, some good tracks. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm curious because now there's like, jazz in it. This one surprised me a lot. Oh, there's no, no more jazz. jazz. I hope not. No jazz. I don't think I there's any not. more jazz. No, uh, I believe not. But I was really surprised by this one. Like, it it went so many other places that I wasn't expecting based on the first disc. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, I'm really curious now about the third disc, but I won't know for another year. Um. Um, I won't know until the sun goes down and the world goes dancing. Um, which is a nice sentiment. Well, actually, it's it's kind of actually I was thinking about this. It's, it's kind of like song. a weird sentiment because, like, have you ever thought about? I mean, he he got me to think about this. Like, to the sun from the sun's perspective, that's gotta suck, right? Like, you go the sun goes down and then everyone like dances and celebrates. It doesn't really go down. Everyone that's enjoys it. It, it keeps rotating around and everyone's yeah, happy. Know. But but I don't know. I feel like if the sun were to hear this song, it'd be like it, may, sorry it might feel, it made you sad. Oh my god! Yes, the sun would be depressed that we're we were Super celebrating depressed. the moon. That'd be yeah. a how to a depressed sun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, because because most of the dancing happens at night, you know, with the help of booze. With the help of booze, very true. <laughs> uh, often, there's a lot. There's there's dancing that happens in the day, but I'd say the majority happens at night. Yeah. Professional yeah. dancing happens during the daytime. That's when the professional parties. dancing. Happens at nighttime. Ah, uh, yes. You okay, gotta have okay. the the day is for professional stuff. The nighttime <laughs> yes, is for yes, the exactly. party. See? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You both have your parts to play. Yeah. He just wants to swirl across the rickety old floor. You know. Uh, but yeah, this one's got a nice sentiment. It's uh just a just a good one on its own. Nice, nice love song. Um, but yeah, this next track we got for you is the way you say good night. You and the sun goes down. How come it's always dark when you're around? You're beautiful, beautiful. The night birds sing their favorite song. Yeah, it's transition from song to song from the last one to this one. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, 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 yeah. From oh, yeah, yeah, the sun goes down, and, the, like, and, and then down. the way you say goodnight. So this is like after they've been dancing for a while, and then they say good night. Loose connection. Um, Bar time. This, but this is another like really sweet track, though. It does kind of fit with the last track, I think. No, this is definitely the more uplifting section of the album. Yeah, yeah. Um, like more optimistic than yeah. a lot of the other songs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like yes. Hey, it's been a good night. Well, and I love, I love that he also says like. The way you say good night, I dream all day long. Oh, I could write a song about the way you say good night. And true to his word, he did it. He did write a song about at least one. At least one. 
Yeah, yeah. It might be another one of the next. Uh, who knows? <laughs> You're not gonna find yeah, out. That might, back, a, that, 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 that might be a that might be a tease. I don't know. Twenty three. Yeah. If you're yeah. listening to this and you fucking listen to the third album before next year, the third disc, how dare you? We're going to fucking you. find you. We're, we're going to find gonna, you. We will find you. <laughs> yeah. We're backtracing every we will single end you. user. Now, I'm going to listen to the third disc because I've heard it before. But well, yeah, you're allowed. Everyone you're allowed. Else, I'm allowed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're allowed. You're allowed. But uh, it, it will be, if anyone even tries to throw that disc in my face, I know what you're thinking. You're like, I'll just hear pauses. No. I'm no. just going to start playing. Uh-uh. Like, no. Uh, uh, go back and listen to disc one if you're like I'm sick yeah, of disc two. See, go back and got, listen to disc one. You got two whole discs. That's to work 46 with. songs to listen. It's to. already 46. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You, you can wait. So how long it takes? You can wait. You know how long it takes the average listener to get through 46 songs? Uh, two years. A, a long time. <laughs> I would hope so. A decade. Otherwise, they're breaking the rules. At least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we're talking to you. Yeah, we're talking, you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. Right. You're listening. Don't you don't don't pause me. You right there. <laughs> don't you dare. How dare How you dare point you? at we're me. Not gonna specif- we're, we're not going to specify your you. name. You know who you are. If you're not paying attention because you have this on in the background while you're working or do your dishes or whatever, we're talking to you too. Like you yeah. do. This is not just for the people who are paying attention. This is for people yeah, not no, paying attention no. too. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is directed. Yeah, we're pointing our finger at you. You can't see it, but we on are. On Zoom call. <laughs> yes, yeah, on, yeah. on the we audio are, you can't hear you might I'll be make, able to hear it. I don't know. Make Maybe a nice you can. Sound. We're gonna I'll make, make a sound. you feel here our fingers. Oh, there's, did you hear that? Is his finger going up? Yeah, yeah. We're pointing right at you guys. Right. <laughs> oh shit. I'm, I I'm worried. My finger. I'm worried about that finger. You gotta. You should oil that grease. thing. Yeah, I gotta oil it. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this uh, this next track we got for you guys is uh a nice little um like irish love song kind of kind of deal uh, irish war ballad i guess is yes. what they're calling it a diddy yeah this is uh, Abig- it's a abigail bell of kilronan oh yeah abigail, that's right fucking weird Yeah, if I if I ever do acid again, I want to do that. I want to listen to this song with these headphones. Yes, definitely it, a headphone song. Wow. Of, yeah, yeah, it really. Oh, it's Yeah, I, I did, you don't get that on just you know. I have it on speakers on my desk, but when I listen to it on headphones, I was like, wow. Well, yeah. you're not holding your speakers up to each ear though. Oh, that's what I should have been doing. <laughs> you could do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. This song is so much better. Just completely, like, complete the uh, hearing loss that I've already <laughs> inflicted on me. <laughs> it says another banger on this yeah. album. Yeah. This is the best yeah. song on the album, in my opinion. I love this song yeah. uh, in particular. Uh, yeah. I, I love an old uh, Irish folk war song, uh, but I also think the use of string at the end of the song is really what makes it work. Um yeah, it comes yeah. just comes in right at the right point. It's very lovely string stuff, and yeah, the stereo work before that is super disorienting yeah. and uh-huh. really, really interesting. Like, to listen whoa, to. whoa, what's yeah, what's yeah. this? It was hard for me to focus on the song person because yes. I just got so distracted with uh, <laughs> yes. the left, yeah. right, like the stereo. Yeah. Like, what's happening? But yeah, the, it's the, a good the, effect. Yeah, it is. They do it really well. Like, I mean, it could mm-hmm. be that could like be a uh, a gimmicky effect, but like they, it works the, the song really, really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the I think it helps player, that it's such a, it's a more sweet song. I think that's why you can get away with doing something that's a little more off-putting potentially. Well, it's like it's it's a weird choice for this kind of song, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Like um, most songwriters, I think, would take a sweet, you know, good, just a just a great song like this and be like, just put it out straight up. Why, right, right. Why do this this thing? But I mean, it it helps it, I think. But um, yeah, and the cello player, by the way, is uh, Sam uh, Dave Devil, D A V O L. But uh, yeah, he he did the cello in in this track. That's ukulele with uh, Stephen Merritt playing. But um, yeah, uh, uh, there's a there is a story with this. Uh, the, there's a backstory with this track. Um, this is actually from Magnetic Fields. Uh, another verified annotation. So I wrote this Irish war ballad while vacationing in Costa Rica with my Irish American boyfriend 
while reading Ken Emerson's Duda, Stephen Foster, and The Rise of American Culture. When I hear the song, I flash back to the capuchin monkeys in the trees above the beach cafe who liked to pee down on our food so we'd abandon it so they'd come down and eat it. Funky monkeys. <laughs> Smart ass monkey. <laughs> like how he... He's such a goopy guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love it when artists come on and actually, like, you know, like give us a little bit. Um, but well, insight. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's it's in that context. It's like, so is he is he like writing this to like kind of impress his like boyfriend? Like, I don't know. Or just gives a head up to all the fans about monkeys and the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's really what this is about. This, you uh, learn something to do. Don't yeah. leave your food alone, Abigail Bell of Kilroy. Oh, monkeys yeah, will love yeah. pea food. <laughs> no, no, not on not on County Galway. That's like the last <laughs> place you want to leave your food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine capuchin monkeys in Ireland? Like, <laughs> that'd be that would, terrifying. That'd be the worst. Now you know I have heard stories that like monkeys can be assholes, and I've heard that from stories from like. African countries and like like India. Well, I went to India, India for, you know? like, for like ten yeah. days in uh in in college, and they are assholes. Yeah, I saw one. I saw several rip food from people's hands. Mm. Uh, there was one time that there was this like monkey across the way that had really just giant cojones, and we went. Oh, he was in, in we charge went inside. that town. We went inside because we were like, no, 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 I don't want to. I don't want any any possibility of that monkey coming our way. I bet they just smoke cigarettes and steal like mopeds all the time. Dude, hey, monkeys they monkeys don't love give cigarettes. a shit, dude. They do not give a fuck. Like it is their it's land. Like a little like monkey mafia. About... Okay, sorry, I don't want to get into this too much. This is depressing, but like there was this thing that happened recently that is just the the, the worst thing I can think of. There was monkeys that were taking dogs, small dogs, from people. And dropping them off of high places to kill them as a like retribution for like one of their monkeys having died in some way. Like it was this horrible fucking thing that was happening in this Indian village. And uh, yeah, just reading about it, there was like just, I don't even want to tell you how many casualties there were from this, but it was, I can only imagine the most horrifying day. You could experience yeah. remember not. people. It's like nature is We're just up. hairless monkeys, all right? Not piss a monkey off. But yeah, just fucking executing dogs. They're like, smart. Oh, sorry. Anyway, and that has cruel, nothing to do apparently. with podcasts. Jesus. I just need to get it off my chest, guys. It's dark. It's dark. Uh, monkeys are dark, man. Just a, PSA, uh, <laughs> just a safety warning for all you out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this next track. Uh, we got one more track for you guys. One more. We're almost there. Um, this one is I Shatter. Track 23. Oh, yeah. It's dark. You called me mad. As a hatter. So full in love. A shatter. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, that's how they chose to end the album. <laughs> With this one, it's great. I'm a high note. Part two. <laughs> it's just, it's like all of a sudden he's doing like a, like an ELO type of thing. Sure, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. but it just sounds so Rocky. bizarre from him. <laughs> you know, right? Because everything up until this point is very clean, like generally. Yeah. And this is the first time where he's like really affecting his vocals in an obvious way to give it away that he's doing stuff to his vocals to make it sound like that. Um, wait, wait, is disc three just like a uh, fucking like Daft it's, Punk type oh yeah, jam? It's just this. No, oh my God. His vocals actually just get worse and worse. It degrades over time. So like, yeah. by, the time you get to it, ones. by the end, yeah. it's just like auto-tuned beyond belief. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, 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 um, but this one, uh, this one's got one last little depressing nugget. Um, the, the main line here, you know, you call me mad as a hatter. You call me mad. Am I mad as a hatter? And then some fall in love. I shatter, which is like kind of going back to some of, uh, uh, I think in the, in the previous disc, there was some stuff about like, uh, uh, not be feeling like he can't love someone, you know? Um, and having difficulty with that, and 
Yeah. We're looking at a three act structure. This is definitely the dark night of the soul for our main characters. Yes. He is, he is in the belly of the whale here. He is sad. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, it makes me, it does make me wonder now, like if it's going to have like a, like a happy ending, if we're looking at it like that, you know? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does Just looking ahead of the Stephen songs Merritt the third doesn't, get, Stephen really. doesn't get more like happy? <laughs> as, uh, as going they, musically, outside of this album, sure. But yeah, uh... yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the the Dark Knight Rises of, uh, of the 69 Love Songs <laughs> next year. Uh, which means it'll be really good, but people probably won't talk about it as much because like it's overshadowed by Whoa, the Dark Knight. Hold on. Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> you think Dark Knight Rises is really good? <laughs> this is a I wild think it's, take. I think it's okay. I just think that the fact that it came out after Dark Knight means that no matter how good it was, it was it not was definitely gonna... doomed. It was definitely doomed. It was yes. doomed. That's what I mean. It was doomed from the start. There was a lot of good elements right. there, though. Um, but you can't follow up Dark. They should have just stopped with Dark Knight. Honestly, they should have stopped once they because I think there's a, a character who's missing from the third movie who they claim that wasn't a big character, but they kept that character alive at the end of the Dark Knight. Oh, you they mean the one to. that was supposed to be Robin or whatever? No, I'm saying the Joker wasn't the third one because I think they obviously would have oh, yeah. had he was some supposed capacity. to come that's back. That's right. That's he right. He was supposed to come back. Yes. Yeah. But not, oh, man. <laughs> Sorry yeah, about speaking superhero movie, speaking of movies. depressing shit. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, the yeah, jo- that's yeah, The Joker. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. You know, every every generation has its Joker. Um, and uh, <laughs> and we got Jared Leto. <laughs> and we got, I guess we got Jared Leto and the the other one, the the, the Joker didn't ask for him, but Joaquin Phoenix. The way I Phoenix. Oh, Walking Phoenix. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. God, God. You know why? So many I know, right? He was so <laughs> bad. Not, not, not Joaquin. Leto, oh, yeah. The, the, the other guy was Leto. so bad. Oh, yeah. Leto, yeah, Leto, Leto was, was, he so was mad. Bad. He was mad about it, too. He was mad that he didn't get that, like, Recognition that or... role. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... It's because nobody liked that movie. Fuck, fuck but... that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck <laughs> Joker. Who cares? Oh, um, Leto's, so, Jared Leto's, like, he gets weirder as time goes on, I think. He, like, he, like peaked early. Uh, sorry, Jared Leto. Um, I know you're an avid was, listener to our what was podcast. His band? his band was uh, Thirty Seconds to Mars. Thirty Seconds to Mars. We, yeah, we yeah. did one of their we, we did one of their albums. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, this is War. So if you want to hear our take on Jared Leto? I think it was mostly positive for that one. But so, like I said, like, like we said, he peaked early. <laughs> he peaked early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's sixty nine love songs. Forty six down. Uh, yeah, forty six down. Twenty three to go. And um, before we get out of here, I'm gonna go uh, around the horn. We're gonna find out what everyone has been listening to and uh, what they have to plug. Uh, I'll start off, and then I'll go Dave, John, and then Marty. So uh, I have been uh, listening to. Um, I'm actually going to say uh, uh, a podcast uh, this week because uh, mostly the music I've been listening to has been stuff on this. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've been I've been uh, listening to uh, a little bit of uh, newcomers uh, since I've been watching the Fast and the Furious films uh, mm. this week. They had a season that they watched the Fast and Furious films, and uh, yeah, those are I just finished nine last night. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nine is uh, good. Nine is very good. Nine's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Nine's but, man, very fun. It is uh, uh, just the one-liners from Vin Diesel are just getting out of hand. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they never—they're <laughs> never connected to anything. No, they don't, they don't make any sense. No, he's doing his own thing in those yeah, movies. Like, yeah, he's on yeah, his, yeah. He's in his own universe. Did he he, is, his, he have his own script and everyone had a different I'm, script? I'm assuming so. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming he has yeah. complete control over being oh, able to 100%. change his lines. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he has to scale one to ten. How fast is nine? Oh, uh, nine. Um. Oh, they go fast. No, they, go, they go. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. I was gonna they say they probably. probably go the it's, a, it's, a, it's a ten. Definitely the fastest. Definitely I the fastest. So. I think they literally have to go the fastest for yeah, one of the in order to do what they have to. <laughs> yes. do. They go to space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they go in space. They, they go, go to space. space. Yeah, yeah. Space. And you have to go pretty fast to get out. And there. pretty yeah. furious. And it. 
And I guess they like get saved by the space station or something. They leave like that part kind of vague. No, but, yeah, they get saved by the international yeah, space station. They see the space station, station like, hey, what's uh, up? No, oh, and it's just like, so oh my it was god. So good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, can't wait. I, I still need to see Hobbs and Shaw though. That's the one that I haven't seen yet. Um, but that's Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. It's not a Fast and Furious <laughs> proper film. Uh, Fast and Furious production. Um, but as for my plugs, uh, I'm going to plug the the YouTubes again uh, this week. We got uh, the Flyer State TV and Flyer State Park. Uh, we're getting uh, more and more YouTuber or more and more uh, subscribers. So if you could go on over to either of those and subscribe, uh, eventually we'll be able to have a custom URL, which will be fun. Uh, so you don't have to type in uh, letters and numbers to, to find us. Uh, what about you, Dave? What have you been uh, listening to, and uh, what do you have to uh, plug? A lot of uh, Mark Mothersbaugh original pieces from like the Wes Anderson films, okay, mm-hmm. like Bottle Rocket, Rushmore, Steve Zissou. A yeah. lot of uh, Les Baxter, uh, basically sort of uh, yeah, he's uh, considered his genre exotica, sort of like a lot of exotica. instrumental stuff. Okay, yeah, and he did a. I remember that section in Sam Goody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a, a a solid soundtrack for an, uh, an album called Hell's Bells, like an old like okay. motorcycle flick, but it was basically like okay. mostly instrumental. That sounds fun. So as Liz Baxter, also a lot of uh, West Montgomery. So it's okay. been sort of a lot yeah. of uh, yeah. guitar, instrumental type strings. Nice, nice. By the last roughly week. Hell yeah, yeah. After after some of the Thelonious Monk did uh, did some more instrumental. Yeah, there was yeah. some Thelonious Monk in that. Listen yeah. to yeah. through the last last couple of weeks. Nice. Nice. That's me. Nice. Uh, what about you, John? Uh, what have you been listening to? What do you got to plug? Oh, I know I said last week I was going to listen to uh, some more of my albums and give you those reviews, but I... Oh, no. I've, well, I was just, I've been it. feeling a little run down this week. That's, those, that's fine. Those, I, I need a little rest. Those, I yeah, wasn't doing yeah. much. Rest other, your ears. But, you know, uh, I've been listening to a lot of Chicago at work, a lot mm-hmm. of Chicago radio. I've been really into that mellow... 80s yeah. sound, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little, yeah. little Bruce Springsteen, you know? That stuff, too, you know? Nice, nice. Uh, otherwise, not much to plug this week. Again, haven't been doing much. Uh, if you live in Wisconsin, order Wings Over Madison. We just opened back up. Uh, That's so we're, true. We're, That's we're true. cranking we're out the chicken. My Super yes. Bowl next week, cranking Ooh. out the chicken. Anyway, you're busy. You're mm, busy. Yeah, mm. I'm fucking, I'm working oh, all yeah. day that day, too. I do. Ooh. Ah, man. Yeah, it's okay. Get those tips. It's okay, though. Uh. The, man, the man needs the help. Anyways, <laughs> uh, and otherwise, hey, I just saw the trailer for uh, Dominion, Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> oh, is there th- the third one? There, it's now? the third one, and they're getting the band back together. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. They got, they got Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and um, Goldblum. Goldblum all coming back for this one. Hmm. And of course, you know everyone from like Jurassic World too. Well, yeah, no yeah. Richard Attenborough, which I thought was a mystery. He's story. dead. Like, you could have got, gotten him back. Yeah, He's CGI dead. You'll see the Iron Man. Well, I think they used Has his vocals. The series, Watch yet? the commercial. Yeah, I think I they I used did, his they did, vocals yeah. at the beginning of they the commercial. They can take his DNA. That's true. <laughs> I mean, they they could just Let's clone Honestly, him. Honestly, I don't know why they don't turn this into like a a, a dinosaur clone hybrid series. Honestly. I mean that. That second one kind of. They, they say this the one's the ends. end of the oh. Jurassic era. Oh, I didn't actually see the or second the record. One. Okay. The second okay. one is about cloning. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so they're one step ahead of me. Okay. All right. They, they say right. this one is the end of the Jurassic era. <laughs> okay. So wait, is the next one going to be Crustaceous Park? I don't know. I don't know. If that's There's a lot of different periods. I don't know. That's their through. next era, but insert correct joke here. Um, but uh, what about you, Marty? What have you been listening to? Uh, what do you got to plug? So I, there was this little documentary that came out last year about this one band from the uh, seven, 60s and 70s who uh, you might have heard of. They're, they're, uh, they're a couple of lads from Liverpool, England. Uh, okay. And oh, so for the, the first Ruddles? time, the Ruddles, yes. <laughs> it was Meet the Ruddles. The Yardbirds. Um, it's the so Yardbirds. I, I had never actually listened to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band all the way through before. And uh, oh, I got to yeah. tell you guys, that album is, oh, that's a really Bro, good album. Go listen to our podcast. Really yeah, yeah, we did. You guys, yeah. you guys did that one too. Okay. Yeah, oh. yeah. That's one of those big uh, concept albums that like kind of got oh, for sure. album sales going again. Yes. It's, yeah. uh, it's so good. I honestly think for my taste in the Beatles, it's probably the only album of theirs that I think has just all good song, like a, it's a perfect yeah, album yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
Sergeant yeah. Peppers. I'll plug Sergeant Peppers. Um, nice. That's a as good far plug. as other plugs, you can catch uh, my wife's movie, Ringolavio, which I yep. co-wrote, edited, and produced. That's on Amazon Prime. It's on Amazon Prime a, now? Yeah, it's been on Prime oh. for a year now at this point. What's it called? Oh, cool. Uh, Ringolavio. Ring- yeah. I think uh, like Ringo, like the like yeah. Ringo. Like the Beatles, yeah. Like the Beatles. <laughs> And then Levio, like L E V I O Guardian Leviosa. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 Just that little part of it. And yeah, then I'll yeah. plug uh, it's a game. My, my first feature, which uh is a music themed movie. Uh that's all I'll say about it. Uh, okay. you can find it. It's called Christopher Darling. That's available on Vimeo.com. Nice. Slash film this. It's kind of a uh Bukowski type thing, is what we're trying to do, I think. Okay. Okay. I'll say cool. that. That's I'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. Well, uh, yeah, and then you know, there's always the podcast that you you had 100 <laughs> episodes. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think it's good. It's a good I, we had a couple, We had good episodes. We had some good. Yeah, episodes. yeah, yeah. You, you guys had some good times. Thank um, you. You're too kind. And uh, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Check out all that <laughs> stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, tune in next week. I'm not sure what we're doing yet, but uh, we will decide uh, after this. Figure out what we're doing next week. But uh, thank you all for tuning in to the Album Concept Hour. We will see you guys next year for 69 Love Songs Part 3. The Album Concept Hour is Brad LeBaron, Dave Gallagher, John Aker, and Jake the Snake Foster. Special thanks to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard for the theme music. Join the discussion on our Discord. Tweet to us at Album Concept Pod, or for everything else, go to Linktree slash Flyover State Park. See you on side B. This is Flyover State Park. You are clear to land.